Hello Tab Nation, it's Tom once again, and today we're going to be talking about how to auto-update your script. Uh, maybe you make some changes and you hand it out to people and you want it to just automatically update when you send out a new version. Now, I'll be completely honest, if you're using this for like personal use or sharing it with your friends, it, this, is, this method's not really going to be for you. This is more of a work environment kind of thing where you have like a shared folder or shared drive or cloud. This is really where this is going to come into play. So let's take a look at this code. Here we go. So nothing really complex, but this is super helpful. Um, when I was creating a program for my job, I would be constantly making like little changes or even big changes, adding new functionality, what have you. And I would send out an email just kind of saying like, hey guys, here's a new version. Here's how you close down your other version. You know, a lot of people aren't very tech savvy, so you have to really explain that sometimes. And here's how you launch the new version. A lot of people would just, I don't know, delete the emails, forget to do it, thinking, oh, I'll do it later, what have you. And then I would have people come to me, you know, oh, I'm having an issue. And I'd be like, I would look at it and be like, wow, you're, you're running version one, which we rolled out like over a year ago. And we're already on like version five or something. And they would just be like, no joke, there would be people who'd be running a version of the program from over a year ago just because they never closed it down and launched the new one. So that's kind of where this idea came from. How can I prevent this? You know, it's one less email people have to read. I don't have to worry about people not doing the update on their own. And so this will uh, kind of solve that issue. And it was a huge success and it's great. So uh, the first thing I'm doing here is I'm setting my working directory to wherever my script is because I am going to be using an INI file in this example. I just found that to be the easiest. And you can obviously change this. Uh, in my script here, I'm using the INI file and the script in the same location. But at uh, the job, I actually would put the INI file in a completely separate file because you might be surprised or not you have experience with this how many times people would like for some odd reason go into that INI file accidentally hit like a space or enter a number and save it and it would just screw everything up or even sometimes people would just be moving their mouse and they would accidentally drag that INI file when they meant to click on the actual script they would just accidentally move that file and it would just go to you know like their desktop or just disappear and once again would screw everything up so sometimes I know people want to be organized, keep everything in one folder, but this is a great case where you might want to try to keep your setting files separate from the executable just because someone goes to double click on the executable and they just accidentally do the wrong thing. And you know, if you got hundreds of people like I do using this, it could definitely screw stuff up. Um, so in your code, you're going to want to assign a variable. I just called it var now. 1.2 so that's my version number uh, you can format this however you want i know some people are okay just doing one two three uh, if i did that unfortunately i'd currently be on probably like version like 200 so that doesn't really make sense for me uh, so you can put like 1.2 and sometimes uh, usually i'll uh, if it's one of our main programs i'll kind of take it a step farther and put a third digit in there and my idea behind this usually is one would be like huge updates like I mean you're completely redoing your script for a completely new style or something Two, uh, that would be kind of you know semi major updates maybe you're adding a, a new function you're deleting a function what have you maybe you're changing up the GUI layout and then three is kind of like really small things so that would be an example of maybe I notice where I have a send and I had a misspelling in it and I need to fix it or I don't know, maybe I just changed the color of a GUI or something. You know, little things that don't really change the functionality, but just kind of fix little bugs that you've uh, noticed. Um, but for this one, we're just going to go ahead with... Um, whoa, what is going on there? We're just going to go with the two-digit one. That works just fine for us. Okay, why is my code just delete all of itself? I'll try to get that back here. What is going on? There we go. That was really bizarre. 
sometimes my keyboard like messes up when I'm recording for some reason. Um, but okay, so we got that. And uh, we're just going to set a timer. We just have, uh, for the sake of this video, I just have it going off every 25 milliseconds or 25 seconds. Uh, what I normally do is I have it go off every hour at work. And then depending on what I need, I can also add once it hits down here to do a time check. You know, maybe the program is storing a lot of information or people are using it constantly. Uh, you might want to do like a time check in the middle of the night saying, okay, it's three o'clock, now do the update. That way it doesn't really interrupt anybody's work. Uh, but in this script, I really don't need that. But that's just an option I'm throwing out there if you guys want. Uh, I did do another video where I show you how to do kind of like time checks and comparisons. So, you know, every 25 seconds, we're going to jump down here to this handler. Uh, we're going to do an INI I read. Uh, we're going to save that as current uh, version now dot txt. I don't have a file path here because I uh, assigned up here. Uh, version and current is where it's going to read. So let me show you that INI I file. I just got it right here. So I've got version, current, 1.2 is my current version. So obviously that matches with up here. So if uh, the uh, current version equals current, meaning nothing's changed, I'm just going to get a message box here that says you are still current. Obviously, you probably don't want this in your work environment, so you would just delete this line of code, but leave that if there with the brackets. Basically, if the current version happens, it's not going to do anything. You can throw a return in there too if it makes you feel a little better. Uh, else, meaning that it didn't match, there's a new version out. Or maybe you're even having to do a rollback. This will work as a rollback too. Maybe you threw out a new version and something just goes completely wonky and you need an emergency way to push everybody back to the last version. You can also do it th with this also. So the versions don't match. It's then going to run automatic update with whatever that current version is that it read from the INI file .ahk. Obviously, if you don't have this uh, directory thing up here, you're going to need to put a, a, a path file down here. Can't speak. And then I'm going to have it exit the version of this. That way, it closes out the old version after the new version's launched. Um, so the new version I have, uh, all I did right there, I just put that version there, and I put uh, just a message box in here so that we can see that it actually did change to the new version. So it's just going to say message box, new version is now running, or new version now running. All right, so let's go ahead and test this out. So right here I got um, uh, auto update 1.2, and this one's auto update 1.3. I still have it at 1.2, so I'm going to go ahead and run it now. Uh, so we'll wait like 25 seconds just so you see that uh, this message box says uh, you are still current. Doo -doo -doo. Probably should have made it a little shorter. <laughs> but I always like to make them at least a little long in case I uh, need to talk. Which actually, hey, if you haven't subscribed yet, definitely do so. I'm doing videos like this all the time with automating your job, your personal life, and gaming. So thank you. And there we go. You are still current. So let's go ahead and change this. Let's let's go ahead and go to um, version 1.3. I'm going to go ahead and close that. And let's wait a few seconds. And it's going to jump down to this else instead. So there we go. New version is now running. So as we see here, it did make the switch over and it closed that last script. So this is a great way to force people to update uh, just because some people will completely forget or they see an email and they think, oh, it's from IT. It has nothing to do with me. I'm just going to delete it. When in reality, it does if they read it. But I learned that the hard way. <laughs> the people do not like to read emails, even though they are very vital. So yeah. Let me know what you guys think. Let me know if you guys end up using something like this. I've seen a lot of people asking kind of questions like this. Uh, this does work uh, with executables, um, so you don't have to worry about that, uh, or a script, but obviously you're probably at work going to be using an executable just because you're probably not installing auto hotkeys on every single person's computer. That would be ridiculous. All right, guys, I'll see you on the next video. Thanks for watching.